embryonic cells. Their potential, their reserve cells, they wait until we need them, and then they divide, and they create whatever it is we need. If you need to repair muscle, then the cells will become muscle. If you mm -hmm. need to repair the bone, the stem cells become bone. You, you want to repair a uh, brain, you got stem cells that will make new nerve cells. Yeah. So basically, throughout all of our bodies are stem cells, and they are embryonic-like cells. Now, when cells mature, see, so when you have an embryo cell which has all the potential to become anything in a body, but when a cell decides to become a muscle cell or a bone cell or a fat cell, it, it, all the cells have the same genes. What you do, it's like a computer program, and you go in and you select some of the genes that you want to make muscle, which is a different set of genes that I would select if I wanted to make bone. Mm -hmm. So when the cells become mature, they only use a certain selection of genes out of the, the whole uh, collection of genes called the genome. Mm -hmm. So every, every mature cell is only using a certain number of genes, but an, a stem cell has all the genes available to be used. So mm -hmm. it hasn't picked them yet. Mm -hmm. And so when we were research was looking for stem cells, they were looking for the original cells in the body, that they're scattered all over the place, that actually are these embryonic-like cells. But what they found is you can, like, reverse engineer or, un, or unprogram a mature cell, like the skin cell. Mm -hmm. And by unprogramming it, meaning open up all the options of the genes, not just the ones that made it a skin cell. Mm -hmm. So the, by reverting the gene, uh, reverting the, the, the genome into the earlier version, you can take a skin cell, which is a mature cell, but then open up the genes so that you can reselect a whole different bunch of genes and make something different with it, mm -hmm, yeah. then you can take a mature cell and turn it back into a stem cell. Hmm. And that's what the new research is showing. Now, the question, which is like a joke to me, because it says, well, wait, we all have stem cells. Then why should we have to wait for the drug companies to figure out how to make them work. Mm -hmm. Why are we giving our stem cells to research scientists to make them work? And you would have to say, well, well, they, obviously they're, they're not working in us, so if we would figure out how to make them work, then we could control them. Mm -hmm. and, and the reality is, but the question is, wait, if we all have stem cells, we have to ask them why they, they work for us. <laughs> <laughs> I like this joke. It's sort of like I ask people in my lectures, I say, do you think God gave us stem cells and no way to use them, that we have to wait for the drug companies to figure out how to use them? Mm -hmm. It's a joke. Of mm -hmm. course we, we must know how to use them. That's why we got them. Sure, sure. The question is, why don't they work for most of us? Well, they work and only when we're... That, well, they do work, but only when we're young, right? No, no, they work every day of your life. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, here's, here, I'll give you a fact uh, yeah. so that you can see why you need them. The, the, the lining of the digestive tract from the, from the mouth all the way down into the gut and all the way out to the end, mm -hmm. the lining layer of cells is replaced every three days. Okay, yeah. Meaning sure. the cells don't live for a long time. But then the question is, so where did you get the new cells from? Mm -hmm. And the answer is stem cells. Okay, sure. And, and your skin, every day, your skin cells are sloughing off and you're replacing your skin every, you know, like over a few months. Sure. All I've, your skin is replaced. Exactly. I've, I've heard of the thing that you, your entire body is actually regenerated every, like, seven years or something, I think. Well, part, it's not everything equally. So, the, like, the gut every three days, uh, sure. skin cells every couple of months. Uh, uh, other cells may last you 50 or 100 years. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. you can't say that everything is replaced. Okay. But here's the point. Anything that is replaced, you have to say, well, where did the replacement come from? Mm -hmm. The answer is stem cells. Mm -hmm. Now, why doesn't it work for some people who have diseases or illnesses where the stem cells don't seem to, to work for them? Mm -hmm. That's why we say, okay, let's give the drug company and figure out how to make it work, right? Mm -hmm. the, no, the first question is, why in these people don't the stem cells work? And, and it, our fundamental belief is, oh, there's something wrong. Just like medicine says, if there's anything wrong with you, there's something wrong with the chemistry. So we'll put new chemicals in there and make it work. Mm -hmm. but, the, but the new science of epigenetics says that the behavior, the genetic activity of the cell is not controlled by the genes. It's controlled by the mind. 
And why is that relevant? Because if I tell you you can't heal yourself and your mind says, oh, I can't heal myself, then if you start to get sick, your mind will prevent your stem cells from healing. Hmm. Hmm. It's very interesting because, hmm. you see, the mind is where the perceptions of the mind control the control the biology and, mm. and and then but where did you get the perceptions about life that control your biology and that's what we mentioned very briefly earlier mm, yeah. is we learn perceptions sure so when you're I, i'll give you i'll give you an example you we are all born with the ability to swim mm -hmm. every baby the moment it's born can come out of the birth canal and automatically swim so mm. a baby could be born underwater and as, a, as, as the moment it comes out of the birth canal, the baby will automatically swim to the surface of the water like a dolphin and take its first breath of air. Mm -hmm. Now, why is that important to me? And the answer is, well, every human is born with the instinctual ability to swim. Then the question is, well, if we're all born and able to swim, then why do we have to work so hard to teach our kids how to swim? <laughs> That's right. Jeez. And the answer is this. If you have a baby and the parents know that the baby is like crawling near the edge of the pond or the baby is near the edge of a river, the baby is alone in the bathtub, the parents freak out mm. because they're afraid, oh my God, the baby's going to drown. Mm. Mm. So when the baby gets near the water, what, what is the response of the parents? And the response is fear. Mm. And, and the baby learns from the parent. Mm. Yeah. So this baby infant doesn't know anything more about water except that it's that wet stuff, but it also knows this. Every time it goes near the water, the parents get afraid and scream and yell, and, and so the baby learns that water is dangerous, <laughs> yeah. that water can kill you. That's what the teaching is, okay? Mm. Well, the problem is now y your child is five years old and you want to teach it to swim, so you put a bathing suit on the child, and you want it to go into the water and swim. And the child has a, a learned experience. And what's the learning? It says, if I go near the water, I die. Mm. <laughs> so when the parents are trying to teach the child how to, how to swim, they want to put it into the water. And the first thing the mind of the child is saying automatically is, I'm going to die. Mm. Hmm. And in that fear, the child can't swim, hmm. even though genetically it was capable of doing that. Mm. So now I'm going to give you another one, another instinct. We are all, we're all of us are born with the ability to heal ourselves. Mm. That we've had that ability for a million years or more. And the issue is, if we can heal ourselves, then why don't we do it? And then I go back and tell you, go back to that childhood period again, the same infant, and recognize as this infant is growing up, every time it's sick, the parents say, we have to take the baby to the doctor. So the baby is learning, just like every time it got near the water, the parents started to scream and get upset. Mm -hmm. This time, anytime anybody in the family is sick or the baby is sick, there's a learning. The learning is, if I am sick, I must go to the doctor. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. well, why is this important? The answer is, well, look, just like the baby was able to swim, but being afraid of the water can't swim now. In this case, the baby is able to heal itself, but it's got a program. The mind's got a program that says, oh, I don't heal myself. I have to go to the doctor. Hmm. So before, so the baby has the ability to heal itself. That's an instinct. But if it gets sick, will it heal itself? And the answer is no, because the first mind thought is, I don't heal myself. I have to go to the doctor. Hmm. Uh, here's the joke. This is the funny part. Many people that are sick, when they're on their way to the doctor, get better. Really? Yeah, they get better just on, on the way to the doctor. You, you, you can ask a lot of people, you'll find a very high percentage, yes. Hmm. And the reason why? Because the behavior said, before I heal myself, I go to the doctor. It didn't say the doctor had to do anything, just said go to the doctor. Mm -hmm. That was the learning. So when a person's sick, they're, they're, they can heal themselves because their instincts are able to do that, but their learning says no. Their learning says, I have to go to the doctor. So... On the way to the doctor, many of them complete the first step of the healing, and then the instinctual ability to heal themselves begins to work because all they said is go to the doctor. They didn't say the doctor had to do anything. 